I waited 14 years for this moment. Please be good. At this point, it is kind of a meme in neurodivergent or queer circles that female friendships tend to be somewhat weird for people like us. But as I was 12, I had never seen a friendship like mine portrayed anywhere in the many books I read until Talion Shay from Uglies. It had been recommended by a male friend in our kind of loose nerd friend group. Soon through that friend group, I met a much more confident and brave girl and we became friends. It was a deep friendship, but also quite jealous and codependent. She was the strong one and I was the one who could fit in. We even cosplayed as Telly and Shay, which in hindsight kind of was a bad sign. <laughs> Back then we swore to each other that if the books would ever become a movie, we would go to the premiere in Berlin dressed up as Telly and Shay. And now the movie won't even get a cinema release and I haven't spoken with this woman in six years. Aglis is in fact one of the very first uh, YA dystopias. It even predates uh, Hunger Games. It's about conformist girl Shelly. Oh my god, eh? Hey Shelly, that's a, that's a ship name. It's about conformist girl Tally who believes deeply in the system, but then she meets Shay, a girl who is a rebel and feels very much restricted by the system. But as Shay rents missing, the government forces Tally to find her. It has themes of beauty culture, but later also branches out into environmental themes and themes of conformity and how a society shapes a person and also a bit of neurodivergent themes, of which some are surprisingly well handled and others, well, not so much. This critic of beauty culture is bitterly needed, even more so than to the time uh, Aglis came out. But I personally always came at the book series from a neurodivergent perspective, not just Telly and Shay's friendship that yeah, it just has the vibes of a neurodivergent friendship, but also this idea that at 16 you would finally fit in. Yeah, sure, you would lose your individuality, but you would be happy and you would have more than two friends. You would be as you should be. Right now, I don't want to be cured of my autism anymore, but back then I was mistreated so badly by my class that I longed for it. I dreamed of this future even if it was a dystopia in which you would lose uh, what makes you you because you would be happy in the end. The neurodivergent themes are not that strong in the first book and the movie will be uh, only the first book and get uh, increasingly stronger uh, later but it still felt very empowering. Uh, no, this is not um, the mostly criticized point about the book series, and I will talk about this later. I, I'm Telly's greatest fan, and now you will finally find out where this name comes from. <laughs> I'm, as the name implies, a longtime fan of this series, and this video will consist of uh, first me talking about what connects me to this series and also the, what I hope will be in the movie, then the trailer reaction, then a spoiler-free discussion. And I will also add an outro with uh, cosplay photos and um, the photos and at the wall, but uh, be warned, they uh, contain spoilers if you look closely at them. There's so much depth in the book, it, and it's not visibly directly, but you have to uh, think about the first layer and then you uh, only see it. And I hope that the movie will just as deep. I like how it almost feels utopian, but you always feel that there is something bad lurking in the background. It's almost scarier than uh, a dystopia you can um, directly see is a bad place. In this sense, it almost feels like Brave New World. And I will maybe make a comparison video one day. Maybe. I don't know. I love how even if there are um, 
romances with men in this book the focus is on how systems of power and beauty culture puts girls against each other and i really hope that the movie lets this focus stay because in my opinion it's the strongest part of the series i only noticed this as an adult because as a teen i was so deeply in the closet that I just didn't see it, but Tally's and Shay's friendship has a very bi feeling to it. Shay's saying how beautiful she thinks Tally is. Tally's narrative constantly focusing on how Shay looks and admiring her, all the face touches. There's jealousy because one gets a boyfriend, the other wanted to, but it also feels uh, even more as like wanting to be in the place of the guy. It reminds me on how back then, as I didn't know I was by, um, my friendship still went weird from it. And it gets even more intense in the later books. I hope so badly they make this canon. I mean, Scott Resterfield is an outspoken ally, and even in the book uh, before this series, The Rise and Empire, uh, he has a canon romance between a cyborg super soldier and a neurodivergent uh, militia worker who are both women. Part of the cast is Laverne Cox, who, uh, who is part of the LGBTQ community. And then there is also Brianne Du, who, is, uh, who plays Shay, who uh, played a lot of sapphic characters in the past. But honestly, I don't think that they are this brave. Even if, in my opinion, that would be a, this would be a very smart move because it would set the series apart from uh, other YA dystopias and also bring in a huge uh, new fan base. But even if they just let it stay a friendship, but even if they just let it stay a friendship, it is so important because female friendships are so rarely focused in science fiction. I really hope that they let it stay though and don't focus on the male romance because that is something we have all seen again and again in so many books and movies. By the way, if you want some uh, guaranteed uh, sapphic dystopias, I can recommend uh, The Scorpion Rules by Erin Bow, which is about uh, a bunch of teenagers who are the children of world leaders who are held hostage by an uh, AE uh, in order to blackmail their parents into not starting wars. And then uh, You Could Be So Pretty by Holly Bourne, which has a very similar uh, idea as Ugly's, but goes at it from a very different direction, because in this world, um, patriarchy and capitalism still exists, which make it, makes it much darker. I also hope they let Tally stay as unlikable as she is in the books. For me, that she is uh, kind of self-focused and naive and has a talent for ruining all her relationships makes her so human and I relate to her much more than I relate to uh, characters who are not this flawed. But I also saw so many people um, dislike her or even hate her. To be honest, I was a bit surprised about Joey King being cast as Telly. Tally in the books is chubby or fat, and it's a relatively important part of uh, how she looks because this is the biggest part of how she doesn't fit into this culture's uh, body ideals. It kind of takes the uh, edge out of it to, ca to cast a thin, conventionally attractive uh, actress as her. But also, I kind of understand it, because if they plan to make more movies, and if they plan to let Joey King uh, play Tally in all of these movies, um, how do I say this without spoiling? There will be quite intense uh, body type changes, and this w it just wouldn't be fair to let uh, our chubby actress have to do this. But also, Joey King kind of looks interesting and unique enough that she could pull off this role. I'm a bit sad that they didn't cast uh, actual teens in this role, but also 
this is a quite extreme idea still and I think like this it's easier to ease um, viewers into the idea. I don't know many of uh, most of the actors so I just go with vibes but even just from the vibes Brian Yu is so fitting as Shay. Sure, um, most of the fandom was imagining her as uh, being Latina, but um, her being Asian also uh, helps to not make uh, her the um, angry Latina stereotype, even if she has absolutely all rights to be angry. I don't have much to say about Shay Stokes playing Paris, because I don't have many feelings about Paris and I never uh, thought about how he looks other than imagining him uh, blonde and white. Kyle Powers as David is probably um, closest to how I imagined him in the book. Sure, I imagined David as kind of short and not quite as uh, conventionally attractive, but the ethnicity fits and the vibe fits and I really like the uh, clothes he wears in the photos they already showed. Laverne Cox as Dr. Cable is probably the most interesting idea to cast. I think quite a lot of people imagined her as looking like Tilda Swinton and that's kind of a stark difference but I also think that she can play up uh, against imaginary Tilda Swinton. It also brings an interesting new edge uh, to the character of Dr. Cable because she always saw herself as someone who protects humanity from its worst impulses and if she now belongs to uh, three um, minorities and not just one and uh, as being a black trans woman she belongs to uh, minorities that in our time have people who had to experience the most horrible of how humanity behaves and that this would make her motivation much more personal. Sure, she would also fall into the uh, uh, minority villain uh, tropes, but I hope that they uh, write her um, nuanced enough that it doesn't come across as if her portrayal says that all people of these minorities are like this. It's a joke in the fandom that Scott Resterfield predicted beauty filters and this shows that uh, beauty culture has become even worse in the time since the books were published. There's just constant pressure from influencers and media and social media now and I was lucky that I read this book so early so that I uh, could um, understand how how harmful all of this is. I mean, this didn't prevent me from everything, but it helped to not fall into the worst of it. It is also so often claimed that all of these uh, beauty culture parts like uh, makeup or restricting clothes are also empowering and yeah, ugly is much more important now than ever. And side note, I kind of like how uh, Aklis doesn't say that plastic surgery is always bad, but that it's only bad if it's used to pressure people into some societal expectations. And this is why, for example, gender reassignment surgery is something very positive because people become more themselves against what society wants from them, but most plastic surgery these days is just women being pressured into patriarchal standards. And now the elephant in the room. <laughs> the quite bad self-harm and eating disorder representation in pretties and specials. Yeah, this will not uh, be shown in uglies, but it's still part of the series and it's the part the, that is the most criticized about it. Problem is that the characters glorify it but the narrative doesn't make uh, sure enough that it's uh, not on their side and that it's something harmful. I do hope that if there are uh, more movies they include uh, this but um, 
only if they actually talk with people who had these problems and learn how to portray it in a empowering way and not in the way the books did. But it, it's Netflix, so they likely will just sanitize it out so that a large part of the neurodiversity themes are gone. Sorry for talking this long, but there are just so many fascinating commentary and ideas in Arklis, and I wanted you to understand this. Now to finally watching the trailer. <laughs> oh god, I'm nervous. I waited 14 years for this moment. Please be good. Okay, start. Interesting beginning. All my life. I wanted to be pretty. I thought it would change everything. I hope that's still true. For those of you turning 16 today, you've waited your entire lives for this moment. <laughs> All the flaws you have today will be gone tomorrow. With one elegant procedure, you'll be beautiful. Didn't expect that the cable to be so open. No one is left behind. Will you promise me something? No matter how pretty they make you, just don't let them erase you. Promise. You get the surgery. They yes, she. And that's it. Paris. What are you doing here? I was worried. Things are just different, yeah? You'll get it, when you're pretty. There's something about this place. It's not what it seems. Okay, I'm not sure told you, creepier? but there's an alternative. I know this place. Welcome to the smoke. They have a different way of doing things. And we will do whatever it takes to protect that. If you want to learn how to fly, you got to learn how to fall. These people want to end us! The smoke has decided their way of living is more worthy than ours. I was told these lies my whole life. It's time for you to make a choice. I wanted to be pretty. I thought it would change everything. Wow. Completely different to how I imagined, but good. <laughs> I did not expect the beginning with Telly being woken by the house uh, at all, but it's very fitting for such a high-tech, uh, high-control environment. And sadly there is not as much focus on Telly and Shay's friendship as I hoped, but every single scene that was there was good. And I can only repeat that Brienne uh, Yu is such a good fit for Shay. She has, her vibes are just exactly how I imagined she. Also her voice is quite fitting and her, I liked her monologue. I was a bit surprised about Dr. Cable being so open uh, because in the book she would have never done this. She was always just hiding under special circumstances, stronghold and Tally was surprised that someone like her even exists because she would uh, so rarely go uh, and be uh, among the other people of the city. It could work and it could be interesting but it's it's quite a change from the book and I I don't know how to feel about this to be honest. What also surprised me about Dr. Cable is that she uh, her is um, quite feminine 
when in the book she always had this air about being quite androgynous. Um, one thing I like, I like about Dr. Cable is that she's so little gendered. Uh, she could be, all of her story could be uh, had by a man and it wouldn't make any difference other than uh, being slightly more cliché. But here she's actually wearing uh, skirts and stuff. And I also hoped that she would wear some cool uh, Afrofuturistic uh, hair, but um, I think her having straighted hair fits quite well with this uh, kind of dystopia, especially if, like in the books, this doesn't have any overt racism anymore, but uh, has um, all these subtle uh, Eurocentric beauty standards. But her voice is so fitting, it's wow. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> Jory King looks even more fitting for Tally uh, if you see the uh, pictures moving and I can't quite put it into words but she also emotes very fitting for, uh, for Tally. I had goosebumps at the first scene with the hoverboards. <laughs> So cool! <laughs> oh my god, I don't even have the words. It's just so surreal to uh, actually see them in a movie. I was also surprised about the fashion being kind of dark and bleak and uh, not much colors to be seen, but also I think this was never um, actually described in the book, but just something I imagined um, myself that uh, they would have many colors in their clothes. And I'm not sure if this is just because of the scenes they chose, but no green in Arkleville? In the books there was quite a lot of green, but it is just a small part. And also damn yeah, the <laughs> The moment about uh, everybody fitting in and nobody being left behind. Um, I hope that they that this means that they will engage with this te uh, theme of fitting in and belonging and um, wanting to be normal so desperately. As I read this, I always imagined the a moment with the smoke lifts um, as the uh, glow uh, thingies um, lying on the grass, but this is much, much cooler. <laughs> the song in the end was a bit uh, cliché, but not so much that it uh, completely brought me out. And in um, seeing it moving, I also even more think that David looks very fitting for the role, because now he, he also has a small um, blemishes on his skin and he yeah, just looks much more like uh, just some guy in a positive sense. And the end was just... I think this is only something you pick up if you have read the book and know uh, certain things, but I really love the subtle horror in uh, what Telly says at the end. <laughs> Yeah, this was much better than I expected, uh, especially after this uh, divergent looking poster. And I'm now looking uh, forward to the movie, um, hopeful. Smoke lives! <laughs>